Okay, looks like we're recording finally. Welcome to week five. <clears throat> Excuse me. Allergies are bugging me, guys. Um, so it's been busy, busy, busy for me. I don't know about you. Um, during it for the holidays, family craziness, lots of different things. So um, let's talk about pivot tables, how to create graphs, freezing panes. Um, and it, I'll do a quick review on how to do uh, graphs, um, which is the same way as doing it for pivot tables. Okay, so pivot tables um, can be wonderful or they can be a nightmare. Uh, it's up to you, but they are extremely helpful, especially if you're going for your like human resources or accounting degree. They, they're going to be like your best friend. So let's uh, let's take a look. Let me get this going. Share my screen. Okay, so as far as for this week, review chapter or module five of your textbook. Um, it's about like 65 pages. I don't remember now. It's been a very long day, sorry. <clears throat> it's definitely been a Monday. Um, so I'm gonna use the file June um, as my demo and definitely try to um, just wind this back if I go too fast, okay? All right, so first things first. Obviously, we have our columns, right? Each and every single one of these is a column, and then we all know that these are the rows and these are the active cells. All right, first things first. In the PowerPoint, it talks about freezing the, the panes, and all right, so this, so. Let's see. Okay. In, let's see back here. In the view tab. Okay. So you, when you upload it, if you're in the home tab, you have your insert, page layout, formula, data, review. Okay, you go to view. Okay. And then it's this one right here. You're gonna have your choices. Freeze a specific um, keep rows and columns visible, and the rest of one will just stay there. Freeze the top row or freeze the first column. Uh, it depends on what you're doing. So let's just freeze the top row and see what happens. Look at that. So if you're always like scrolling back up and going, God, I can't figure out what is what. And especially if you have like this immense amount of data, um, which if you're going to be like a data scientist or accountant or something like that, statistician, you're going to have data coming out of your ears. Um, this is like super helpful. It just helps you keep it organized and always know what you're looking at. It doesn't matter if you're down to like all the way down and hundreds or thousands of, you know, cells or rows, you can always know exactly what you're looking at. Like you just saw, I just scroll down to a couple hundred and I could know that column A is the sale date, column B is the date, C is sales ID, Business type is D, and then E is the amount, okay? All right, now, now we have that one. That's easy. I'm going to click the same thing. You click freeze panes, unfreeze panes. Now, look. Yeah, it's just fine, okay? So it's up to you what you're doing with it. Um, but it's that simple. Now, we're gonna go to home, okay? I'm gonna select my data. Scroll down. So it ends at 102. Now go to insert and we're going to do a pivot table. You can do recommended pivot tables, they'll always recommend it, but you can click pivot table. Okay, and this is your data range. And you click OK. It's either your existing location or a new worksheet. Remember, worksheets are these tabs down here, okay? I would always recommend new worksheet, just in case. All right, now, see how it has all of the data selected right here? It says build your pivot table report. Well, let's just select everything. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, look at this. It puts in these beautiful little columns for us. The sale data is already there, the raw data, and then we have our little report, okay. Let's just say I want to know still all the sale dates. And I still want to know, you know, 
if it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I, that I still want to know. But I only want to isolate group home and residential care. So sale date, we leave alone. Day, we leave alone. Sales ID, we leave alone. Business, ah, we're going to unselect everything. We're going to do group home and residential care. We're going to click OK. Look at that. It changed the report. Look at this. Now I can isolate exactly what I'm looking at. Isn't that cool? Now let's just say something looks fishy. Or you're looking for a specific amount and you're just like, God, I can't figure this out. OK, and let's let's just say we're looking at for that number. OK, but we're like, so deep into it we're just like what in the world is going on i can't uh, everything's blurring we don't know oh uh, what let's find and select find 279 find i found it look see it's right there I automatically found it and if there was a next, you would do next, okay? Now, here's another really cool feature. These are already kind of categorized. Let's just do here, here. We do sort and filter. All right, now, I only want, let's see, is there 2018? I don't remember. Let's just say we want to get rid of June. Um, so the zero there's still June. Let's just say we want to omit the sixth, omit the eighth, the 19th, the 17th, and the 20th. Those are the dates that we don't want. And yeah, and I got rid of them. Look at that. Okay, that's the really cool thing about sorting and filtering. Okay, and you can always undo it. You know, just control Z and it brings it back. Or you can go back through what you just did and select everything back. <clears throat> but you can do that the same thing with the sales ID. You can unselect it and just, I only want two. And it's only going to leave the two. But it still leaves what the columns are and the rows. You see this? 98, but it, there's only a few of them. Does that make sense? So it only, it brings it up and it hides the other stuff is what it does. Then you can go back in and you say, oh, I'm going to select back all. Done, done. Just like that. Okay. All right. So let's get to the pivot table again. <clears throat> all right. Now, insert recommended chart. So let's do a cluster chart. All right. <clears throat> so we already have a pivot table selected because we're pulling from that data. Let's just say we I want to move this pivot table right there. Okay. Oh God, there, everything is so jumbled up. What in the heck do I do? All right. I only want, I want to unselect this. I want the first and the ninth. Yeah, why not? Okay. Look at this. The first and the ninth business types. I want them all. I want to know everything that's going on. And then just built that. And then if you look at your pivot table here, see, it shows that and it shows this. So that's the power of pivot tables. They are immensely helpful with huge amounts of data. Like if you're just, honestly, if you're just doing something that has less than 30 lines of data, just do a regular everyday um, graph for regular data. Unless you're using multiple categories, multiple dates, huge amounts of data, I'd say more than 30 for sure. <clears throat> when I was the director of engineering, I had to run 400 kids through 
you know, grade checks. And I imported all the information into an Excel spreadsheet from our student database. And then I filtered them out, you know, 3.5 GPAs and up. They're, they're not in danger, they're fine. I <clears throat> dumped them, they're okay. 3.0 to 3.499, they're in danger of falling below the category that they need to maintain for getting into a four-year university. <clears throat> and then I isolate those students. Anyone that's a 2.99 or below, ooh, they're in trouble. They, you know, they're, they get put on academic probation. Whoa, my phone just scared me. It's Fox News. Um, I don't, you guys know that I live in Mendocino County, right? We just got put back in the purple tier as of noon today. See the excitement. This is not fun. And I know you guys down in Santa Rosa have been in purple for a lot longer than we have. So I, I, I totally feel you. All right, if you have any questions, you know, let me know. Um, shoot me an email, smoke signals, no pun intended, sorry. Um, and then I'll, I'll help you out. For this week, you have two weeks to get everything done, okay? If you don't get it done by this upcoming Sunday, don't sweat it. You have the entire Thanksgiving break. I am not assigning official homework or work over that week. That is unacceptable, I will not do that. But if you need extra time to get caught up and do whatever you need to do, you got it, okay? Life is happening faster than I don't know what with COVID and you know, families just being families, you know, it's the holidays, it's crazy time. Um, and sorry, I didn't get this up last night. Uh, I had to go down and help a dear friend with his, his wife, his wife has terminal cancer and uh, long story short, um, my fiance and I have been making him food and her food, whatever she can eat, so they don't have to think about it. So we do that once a week, take it down there, visit with him a little bit. We stay away from her, just I don't want to get her sick and then drop off food. So yeah, that's my life. All right, take care guys. And if you have any questions, please ask. Okay, I did like crash course version, but I know you're all busy, so good luck. Um, after Thanksgiving break, you'll have another, another discussion on, you know, top 10 things that you really like that we've covered in the first five modules. Okay, all right. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. My best to all your families, and if you need help, let me know.